MotoGP moves away from Spain and over to France. We're at the Bugatti circuit at the famous Circuit de la South in Le Mans. Welcome to one of the most passionate and enthusiastic crowds in all of racing. It's MotoGP's party in France and we've been going absolutely nuts. It's time for qualifying. Hello everybody, welcome to qualifying here at Le Mans. Let's head it downstairs straight away to Susie Perry. I don't know how you feel about it, but that's my fault because I've got a bit of a dodgy voice today. The alternative, if it breaks down, is Neil Hodgson. So there you go, take your pick. Uh, welcome Sylvain Gantoli, Michael Laverty uh, this morning. We've had a fabulous weekend so far. I mean, the sun is shining. It's a bank holiday weekend in France and we're expecting 300,000 people across the weekend, Sylvain. Unbelievable. I think we're going to break another record here. Broke it last year and so far the weather, the atmosphere, everything has been so good. I mean, I've, I've never seen so many people for Friday, for Saturday. Uh, it just feels unbelievable. So, um, yeah, the weather might change a little bit tomorrow, but so far we've had a perfect weekend. Yeah, possibly a little rain. Let's uh, get stuck into the track, Michael. It has thrown out a few gremlins, hasn't it? Particularly for Grissini. What do you feel has been going on for uh, Alex and Mark? It's a unique circuit here. The grip's quite different to where we've been over the previous four rounds. So you come here, the bike feels a little different. You get caught out in a different instance. A lot of the corners are downhill off camber. So we know Mark has a slightly different attack and riding style, perhaps the front not holding up where he perhaps would have expected in years gone by, but they'll figure it out. I think um, the, the crashes yesterday just put them a little bit on the back foot. Nothing too much to be concerned about. Mark was felt like he was out of sorts to not get a direct qualification through to Q2 in the afternoon. And uh, I think likewise with Alex, you've seen them both in their fifth and sixth in the free practice session. There's a little bit um, of margin for them to find overnight on the GP23 Ducati, but yeah, it is, the margins are so close around this race circuit. Every little aspect has to be bang on if you want to get a lap time and get straight through. Yeah, fifth and sixth in the last session. So it looks like they may well have resolved their issues there. But Brad Binder's had a woeful weekend. The boys mentioned it in the last session. Twice down at turn 13 yesterday. He seemed to be taking a slightly different line. It's, it's really unlike Brad to, to fall. Yeah, yeah, very unlike, um, unlike him. And so many mistakes on the same day as well. So clearly something not quite right there with the, with the feeling with the, with the front end, losing the front every time. So he did say after the crashes that he um, um, had a look at the data and in turn 13 where he had two of his crashes, he was going a little bit wider into that corner than his, all his teammates. So it's a corner, it's a the raccordement is like a really tight right, uh, double right under. And the first one where he crashed, you have to go onto, onto the brakes and use that trail braking phase to stop the bike. He was going a bit wider trying to carry a little bit more corner speed and lean on goal and that's why he crashed. Okay, let's uh, see if we can get a little bit more wisdom from the team boss then Francesco Guidotti's in the pits with Nat. Francesco, it seems to be mixed fortunes at the moment when one rider is doing well, the other not so well. Look, we know Brad isn't a crasher, but he had three yesterday. What's, uh, what's going on with Brad? It's a uh, overconfidence. I mean, that's, uh, from one side it's good because it means that the feeling is good. On the other side, uh, we have uh, to keep a limit, you know. So, yeah, I mean, three crashes in a in in, in, a, in a day is uh, it's a lot. Whatever is the reason, it's uh, it's too risky. I mean, uh, we understand uh, his size, so he's so good and he wants more and more, but somehow he has also to to find a compromise. So he was a little bit too fast, also compared to the other riders there. He was asking a little bit too much. But yeah, on the other side, that means that um, he feel good and uh, he was uh, ready to go over, over the limit. So yeah, let's keep it like a, a good sign. But yeah, we have to bring uh, home some, uh, some points, some results, because the last races we struggled a little bit too much. You'll be hoping he gets through to, to Q2 where Jack is already. A better feeling for him this weekend? Yeah, we know he uh, is uh, one of his favorite um, circuit, maybe. And uh, he performed with pretty well. Um, Q1 is always tricky, especially today for riders for two spots. Will be fun for for the show. <laughs> Will be stressful for us. Thanks, Francesco. No problem. Thank you. 
always the positive spin from Francesco Gudotti then uh, as his rider Brad Binder has to go that's the KTM story but don't forget also both of the Marquez brothers out in this one and also Enea Bastianini it's very difficult to pick two riders Gavin and I'm going to try and force Neil Hodgson to do it right now you, you always there was silence did you notice you the always silence try and make me look daft so. <laughs> it's not hard <laughs> it really isn't hard at all uh, but as Susie said there, that's just four of the riders. That's not mentioning Raul Fernandez and Miguel Oliveira, who could always cope with something. Augusto Fernandez, who actually matched Pedro Acosta's times. In fact, he was quicker in that previous session just then. So, I won't want to be in this. No, no, no. Do you know what? Track position is going to play a big part in it. If you can get um, a, a, just a marker in front, not necessarily a slipstream, because you won't get much on a GP bike around this track, but just someone to chase down in, in, the, in these breaking zones, it will play a part. Mark Marquez has got in behind an Air Bastianini. Was that a good tactic? Well, he's also got his brother behind him who did that, did that in the previous session and went quicker than Mark. So Mark's never really been too worried about, let's say, showing a, a wheel to his brother or towing his brother around. But um, with, with the time so close, it's really difficult to call, isn't it? And like you said, the, 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 the line you just said is so true. It's a session you wouldn't want to be in. This is a tough session because it's going to determine if a few riders' weekends, some for the better and some for the worse. Because if you end up on that fifth row, it's so tight up into that. You know, turn one's pretty much flat out from the start, which turn one goes straight into turn two. It's like one corner, but then you've got to break really hard into that. It's really slow, turn three, will be, it's going to be tough. Jean Zarco trying to do it for the French fans, but uh, languishing this weekend on the Honda. It is just not working for them. A track that in the past would have suited that bike well really is not what they need at this moment in time. So Mark Marquez tracking Bastianini. Wonder whether, uh, yeah, I was going to say, I wonder whether he'd take the shortcut there and he's just cut through a little bit of the racetrack. Yeah, just to get that little bit nearer to help. Yeah, that's a good information. Oh, Bastion being followed by, yeah, go across the line for uh, Bagnaia. Yeah, so I thought that might happen as well. Bingo, there we go. Bingo was his name, oh. As uh, what's happened here with all my controls? Look at that. Who's been messing around with my uh, commentary box? Is it working? Here we go. So, we're underway then for this session. Oliveira and Mark Marquez. Yeah, I thought there was another. Timing screen's wrong again. It's all, it hasn't been readjusted. It's all gone wibbly again. Let's go battle screen, i fix this. Curb through the Dunlop chicane over the top, down towards La Chapelle, the front bouncing and bobbling as he went down the bottom there of La Chapelle. That didn't look right. No, it looked nervous, didn't it? Very so nervous. Through Museum Corner. Marquez having to do it himself. He's also lost his brother from behind him. Alex Rins has set the first marker of this session, a 131.3. I feel like you're going to have to be well down into the 30s. Yeah, you have to be probably at least half a second quicker than that. Well, more. Yeah, it's like maybe 30.56, yeah. somewhere around there, perhaps. Oof, again. Oh, four tenths of a second now underneath Rinz's time. Could take him into that 30 bracket. Just looks a bit nervous, the bike, doesn't it? It's you don't know how Maverick Vinales looked like. The bike wasn't moving, it was on rails. And Pedro Bagnaia, you know, he, he might have got a little bit more out of shape on corner entry, but the wheels, when they got into line... Off the pace, yeah, I knew we were going with that one. So, the timing screen start. Mark Marquez does a 130.586 across the board. Rins is P2. Remember, top two from this session. Progress forward. So, that's what we've got to keep an eye on here. As I'm just, I'm just now adjusting my own stream. I'm not liking how it looks sometimes. So, hopefully everyone is liking what we've got right now. Just adjusting it. Oliveira, 12,000 down now as well. So he was on a course to go forward, but it wasn't working too well. Let's head back over. 
looks like Fernandez is just about at that point where he might be holding him up ever so slightly. No, could be just all right. Yeah, it might be all right. I mean, Fernandez he finished fourth here last year. That was his best result of, of this the year in his rookie season. So it's a track we know he goes well on. And Miguel Oliveira right on cue goes up into second place. It's worked for the track house Aprilia man. Here's his teammate, Raul Fernandez. We said there were threats in this session and already proven to be so. Look at that ground effect bearing for Raul Fernandez, just perfectly parallel to the ground as he came through the raccordement and he goes into third just behind his teammate. A few nails being bitten down there by Davide Bruvio and Vilko Zielenberg. And A. Bastinini dragging through Alex Marquez now through the record of one, but just by blowing one corner, do you take the edges off ever so slightly? He's only got fourth, Marquez fifth. Yeah, that's the problem with this track. You have to be so precise, and one small mistake, and the time's gone. If you, you lose the 10th round here, you're not going through. With, with, we've seen in the previous sessions just how close the times are. Marquez, Mark version, back down pit lane. He is top of the pile in this session. It's him from Oliveira. Zarco's on a decent lap here. Really? I mean, this is Unreal. pushing this Honda to limits. Taking all the energy from this huge crowd that's amassed here at Le Mans. Joan Zarco to the line. We can hear the circuit commentator getting excited. A 1 minute 30.8 is so competitive, yeah. so good. But only fifth. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, you, you know, well, the beauty is that's, that Zarco getting the absolute most out of that motorcycle. And that's, obviously, I know that's his job, but. Best Honda yesterday was a 131.5. He's gone three quarters of a second quicker. Yeah, Pretty much. Yeah, that's the limit, I'm guessing. Watch Mark pick the bike up here, right? So he throws it in here and straight away. And he does that. That, he didn't do it as much on that lap, actually, unfortunately. <laughs> but I watched him on the previous lap. He really pulls the inside bar, which lifts the bike up. A bit Danny so Pedrosa quickly. style. Yeah, absolutely, Danny Pedrosa style. Yeah, well, of course, Mark Marquez learned from that. Mark, of course, it was his teacher almost. Uh, it was coming through. So apparently JT's having a laugh as well in his uh, session. Oh, it's all running around today for the sessions as the riders all back in the pit lane. Wind's coming in, Marini coming in too. So we're in the lull then of qualifying numero uno. As we see Anea Bastianini now turns 13 and 14, having a little bit of a trail in and out. That's with Alex Marquez just behind. Mark Marquez are having to go through Q1. Everybody was saying, oh no, what a disaster. Anybody who knows Mark Marquez knows this is not a problem in the slightest. He's P1, Oliveira's P2, Raul Fernandez, Anea Bashini, Jan Zarka, Alex Wins, Alex Marquez, Augusto Fernandez, Juan Mir, Nakagami. As well, Marini and Binder yet to set the time. We're seeing Binder now on our TV monitors up here in the commentary box as he ventures out of the KTM. Mark Marquez just standing a couple more. He doesn't want to go out until he absolutely has to as well. So there's a couple more interesting dilemmas coming in this session, to say the least. Five minutes, 40 to go. So basically what's happening from now on, uh, qualifying for the French Grand Prix, live here on Twitch, delayed on YouTube. It's the way we're gonna have it for a while. Sprint races and races live on uh, YouTube and Twitch. So it's all normal then, but uh, just avoiding possibilities, especially with Le Mans coming up. Bastianini. Holding it in, calm now as well, as he gets ready to shoot out. So does Mark Marquez. The tension is rising. It is palpable. 
up here right now as everyone just expects to have Dominion to get into Q2. Really weird, Bastianini watching on as well. There's Mark Marquez. Bagnaia in the pit lane, watching his teammate to see if he can go through. And away they go. Rins coming with them as well on the Yamaha. Well done, I must say, to Fabio Quattararo, the only Japanese bike to make it through to the next session on the Yamaha. He's automatically in the second part of qualifying. So I think, uh, I don't know if it's a well done, but a well done, I think, is extremely deserved on that front as well really has been something quite special and unique we've been seeing binder on the attack charging through into the four chicane at turns two and three down to la chapelle and down now breaking hard four tenths down already on marquez's time 135.86 Decent run, 66,000 to Oliveira. Then they pulled two tenths to Raul Fernandez. So, yeah, let's just change the gap to first, shall we? Out here on the commentary, so you can all see at home. Oh, hello. Who else had a little heart attack when that happened? I know I did. The entire time is green glitching. Oh, Nakagami moves up to eighth place. 131.446 on the Delta. I was about to open up the sector times. I don't need to. You can see them all. We've got half the timing screen open at the top of the page as well because there's only 12 in there. So the qualifying screen back up into normal operation. Binder still lacking a few bits of pace as they come out the last corner. Everyone starts then. What well, could be their penult Well, this is their penultimate lap. Is it going to be their last lap, depending on what happens? Bastianini out first. Then it's Mark Marquez into the chicane. Mark's gone off. Mark's made a mistake already, and he's run straight on. The bike too far down at the exit of turn one. I knew it was going to happen. It was too far down. It drifted out from under him. He lost the front. He kicked it back up, but he did well not to drop it there, Mark. Saved it on his knee. Really was a bit of a close one there. So Mark is going to have to do it all on one lap. He's got fastest time at the moment with a 135.86, but he doesn't need to crash. Brad Binder, however, a man who's crashed three times already this weekend, twice yesterday in the practice session, the 60 minute timed, forced him to go through this very qualifying one session. He's now gonna have to find a lot more pace. He's down in 12th at the moment. Bastianini's up in the sectors as well as he comes out of the Esplou chicane. And he's up by two tenths of a second as well. Zarco's had his lap time cancelled for a shortcut. He's going to have to go again. Augusto Fernandez in there too. So they're all going to set a banker. Then we're going to go for one more bonanza. And it will be around about one minute, 30 seconds left precisely for everyone. Bang, someone's gone down. Someone's down in the back of the track in sector four. Someone's gone for the last corner. And that's crucial because Bastianini, I think, just got across the line. 132.79. We yet to see if that time's going to stand. But everyone else now coming through isn't going to stand. And they've all had to round out the lap. So's Rins because of that very yellow flag. So who crashed at the last corner? It's the 37 of Augusto Fernandez. But now, crucially, we've gone back to green flag running. So it's cost Alex Rins a lap time. Yellow flag sectors one and two. Someone else is down, down in turn six. That's at the museum corner. Who's throwing it down on the deck there? A La Chapelle coming into museum. Can't see anyone at the moment. Mar Marquez still circulating. And it's Johan Zarco. So Zarco's destroyed everybody else's lap times. He's deep in the gravel at La Chapelle. So that's it then. Bastianini's going to go top. Marquez will go second. But I think everybody else was through that yellow flag zone. Nobody else is going to find the improvement time they need. It's just not going to happen. That time cancel for the 30. It's all coming through now on the timing monitor. If there's that many, you might see them popping up at the side. 
Bastianini. Up, two, one. He misses out, takes the checkered flag. Bastianini does a 130.233. He goes fastest. Mark Marquez, lap time cancelled. And that's kicked him out. That's kicked him out. Oliveira. No. 33 is lap times cancelled for yellow flag. The 42 as well. But Oliveira has gone second fastest and kicked out Mark Marquez. Now, is that going to be a lap time deletion for Oliveira? I can't see how that one's going to stand considering he went through the yellow flag zones. I can't see. A lap time cancelled for the 73 as well. So that's Alex Marquez. But surely Oliveira's lap time is going to be deleted as well. Mark had his for yellow flag. Oliveira was in the same sector. I can't, I can't understand why that hasn't been deleted. The stewards again, not making the rules clear and playing favourites. That's not on. Bastian and Oliveira go through. Mark loses out due to a yellow flag rule, despite the fact he was past it. But Oliveira was in that same part of the track and he's improved on his lap time. No. Second week running, these qualifying rules make no sense. The MotoGP stewards uh, just like to play any, just, you know, doesn't matter. Now, this is Zarco's crash. Down to La Chapelle, second gear, down, 54, 56, 57, yeah, and he just drops the front mid exit. Lap time cancelled for the 25 for a shortcut. That's Raul Fernandez. There's Binder, there's Mark Marquez through the same part of the accident zone. Oliveira must have gone through as well. I can't see how he hasn't. In another sector, thank you very much to Eagle Eyes 83. You very much are Eagle Eyes, aren't you? Well, thank you for that. So Oliveira is in another sector, so he is going to keep his lap time. Bastianini does anyway because he was uh, definitely a sector ahead. 132.33. So, Mark Marquez has to start this race, both races from 13th. Let's head down to Susie Perry. And they are going through. We can have a look at that, but a great time, Michael, uh, putting in the fastest ever lap around uh, Le Mans and under pressure as well. A previous winner around here, obviously didn't expect to be in Q2, was fast from the outset yesterday. Got it done under pressure, as you mentioned. It didn't work for him first exit, but then nailed all his markers. And uh, yeah, fastest ever two-wheel lap. I think it could well be bettered here in Q2. They've raised the game every circuit we've been to in MotoGP 2024. But yeah, Anaya's on form throughout the season. He's, I think, third in the championship. He's consistently delivering. So yeah, he needed the, the spot in Q2 this afternoon and he's got there. And the second spot going through, Miguel Oliveira, just making it through before those yellow flags came out and uh, getting that lap in. That's fantastic for him and for Trackhouse. Brilliant. Great solid start of season for Oliveira, but we've not seen much of him. And that was a really fast lap. So, yeah, well done to him. He was um, just, uh, well, I was going to say he was a little bit lucky not to get the, the yellow flag. He was, let's say, not unlucky to get it. Uh, it was a great lap. And uh, for him, he needs it at the moment. We know that, you know, Trackhouse is making plans for next year as well. It is Ryan rider signing moment so yeah for him to shine now and uh, and do this that's um, uh, that's good for his uh, future great tidy lap but woes continue for mark marquez michael i mean we saw so many moments out there in very few laps really but there was an incredible save first of all i mean just yeah. talk us through this when you go through turn one two and you lean on the front tire to change direction you you, you just usually a passenger. We've seen uh, Jack Miller save one very similar a few years ago. Or actually, sorry, Jack didn't save it. He rode into the wall. But Mark's ability to um, to respond, to react as quick as he does, release the brake, take the pressure off the front tire, somehow regain grip. Obviously, that ruined his Q2 spot because he had the perfect track position, was behind Inea. I think Inea slowed the pace enough on the previous lap, and maybe Mark did let a little bit of temperature drop out of his front tyre, and he just got caught out. He was in a little bit tight, though, on entry at the kerb, so he actually was grabbing the brake with a little bit too much lean angle. He just got it wrong, and then that means he's starting from 13th tomorrow, so, yeah, yeah it puts you on the back foot. What do you make of that, Mark, from 13th around here? Mm, that's going to be tough. I mean, the lap times are so tight, and I am actually here, I am a little bit worried about turn one, because the riders have been so close, you know, and they, they obviously they know that. We're going to get the qualifying, we're going to get that grid. They're going to start all together with all those ride, 
uh, devices on and here it's very hard to unlock them because turn one is actually a really fast and flowy corner and turn two is that left change of direction where you can see as Mark showed it's really easy to lose the front there uh, it's hard to be aggressive on the brakes and unlock those devices but the riders will be taking risks because they know the lap times are super close and you can make that difference um, so yeah I, I think this is gonna be um, you know it's gonna be a hairy few corners yeah, and you talk about the race tomorrow. Of course, we've got the sprint this afternoon, so we're going to get a, a preview of how it's going to go for tomorrow. Um, Q2 coming up, and a little bit of surprise yesterday, a nice one, uh, with Fabio Quattararo making it straight through. Uh, so great for him, great for Yamaha. And let's get the news from team boss. Mayo Marigola is with Nat. Well, Mayo, for Fabio, I've no doubt being at home gives you that extra push, but to be straight into Q2, just point three off the top three, that's a real positive from yesterday, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was, and uh, we were uh, really relieved because uh, we didn't start as we wanted because uh, in FP1, uh, he was not uh, very comfortable on the bike, also the rear median didn't work uh, properly, and uh, we could not expect such a big step from uh, FP1 and uh, P1, but uh, what he was being able to do has been good. Also this morning, uh, because last night we have been able to work a bit on the setups and he, he was quite satisfied. I really hoping that he will uh, be able to put together a fantastic lap because uh, to, to have uh, the possibility to start in the second, third row, it will be very good for us. Do you think it's possible? Uh, I don't know, but <laughs> I'm keeping my finger crossed. <laughs> Alex was pushing, obviously, in that, in that last um, session there. I know that both riders testing a lot of things in Jerez. Doesn't look like the, the new chassis is quite right for them, is that right? No, we are back in standard uh, uh, setups because, uh, you know, during the race weekend, you can't uh, make any comparison. You don't have time and uh, you don't want also to lose the uh, concentration. Uh, Alex, um, uh, yesterday he, he was not still uh, comfortable with the setup of the bike. Uh, we did some work today. He improved, but uh, unfortunately not enough to, to be in the Q2. Thanks for your time, Maya. You're welcome. Well, we'll find out what Fabio can do. He did just squeak through yesterday, didn't he, into 10th. And at the other end of the field, Olga Martin was absolutely sublime, uh, top of both sessions, and he really looked like he got that magic back again. Yeah, I mean, Martin is so fast. On the time attack, he's, he's amazing. We know, we know that he's explosive. He's, I mean, his riding style on that Ducati is just like, it's getting better and better as well. He just hangs off that bike so much. Get the best of it. Uh, with the new grip, but when the, with the new tire and the extra grip, we know he's a, he's a specialist for that, so he's probably the favorite for pole position. And the conditions are perfect. I mean, you could not get it better. The, the wind is low. We've got just enough temperature, but not too hot, so that it's not too greasy out there. So we're going to see some lap records again, I think. And the Ducatis do seem to love this circuit, possibly with the exception of the Cassinis at the moment. But a shout out to Fabio Di Gian Antonio, who also looked really strong because after the test in Jerez, he seemed to have found something, doesn't he? Yeah, after the finish of last season on the GP22, switching to the, the newer model, the championship winning bike, it put him a little bit out of sorts for the first few rounds. It was nice to see a bit of a resurgence over uh, the Jerez weekend, the test coming at the right time, and then his first trip through to uh, Q2 directly from the Friday session. So I think Fabio, he's got a lot more to give, and now inside the VR46 squad, he will begin to grow. So yeah, it's nice to see those green shoots. Pedro Costa, third fastest across the weekend. Uh, and Hervé thinking that every race for Pedro is a home race because he's winning fans all over the world. What do you expect from him in this session? Amazing rider and an amazing uh, um, couple of sessions yesterday and this morning. He's been, he's been so strong and it's the approach as well. Yesterday, FP1, he went out, first five laps on the MotoGP bike around here. So okay, he knows the track from the smaller categories, but you have to adapt all your braking markers and everything. And he did that so fast. He was right at the sharp end straight away. Then he went on to test, sort of test every corner, making mistakes, losing the front, getting it back. 
absolutely amazing and his pace looked good as well for the race yeah and Peko getting his championship uh, contention really get back online last time out in the earth and he's looked superb across the weekend not and it doesn't normally do that on on a friday or a saturday no but he's getting better at his friday afternoons he, he stepped up in that area that was previously a little bit of a weakness the way he commanded the race in Perth, it's given him an air of confidence heading into the weekend in Le Mans, and he's carrying it forth. So, yeah, I think uh, Peko's a real danger man for Paul here. And uh, he's possibly the man who, while well, he's fastest across the weekend, incredible shots there, weren't they, of the crowd here on Saturday. Just to reiterate, uh, it's, you know, the most well-attended GP in French Grand Prix, 280,000 last year, expecting 300,000 across the weekend, with Jorge Martin uh, being fastest and Maverick Vinales in there too. I'll throw to you because you can hear my voice is just about to squeak away, Gav. Enjoy this one. <laughs> There'll be a few people squeaking in the crowds too as well as this Q2 gets going and we decide pole position for the Grand Prix of France with their hero Fabio Quartararo in the mix. Whether he gets onto the front couple of rows is probably a little bit doubtful. You can hear the resignation in Massimo Merigali's voice beforehand. Who is going to sit at the front of the grid for tomorrow's 27 lap MotoGP race and the sprint of 13 laps later on this afternoon? A year ago, Neil, it was Peko Bagnaia, but yesterday, Martin was quickest and, and Maverick Vinales just before in free practice was quick and Airbus and he's gone quicker than anyone in that Q1 session. Yeah, th I've got a feeling though, Jorge Martin definitely. He uh, fastest in free practice one, free the, the second practice. I don't know what it's called. What's it called, Gavin? Well, it's practice. Well, it, oh, it's practice, practice one. Oh, so the second practice is called, Gavin? Practice. Get ready. practice one. No, just practice. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was called pra oh, just practice. Because there aren't two of them. There's just one. <laughs> so anyway, the second time they were on the track, he was fastest. And and it, it, I, I feel with Jorge Martin, it all started on Thursday in the press conference. There was a quite a um, to and fro in talking about who's going to get the factory Ducati ride. And Mark was, I'd say, prodding him a little bit. And I'd, I'd, I'd say Mark won that contest. But Jorge Martin... So I'm gonna leave it till I'm gonna leave my talk until I get on the track, and that's what he did yesterday, and he was fast this morning. So I'm definitely saying Jorge Martin for pole. There's gonna be some ridiculous lap times in this session. What do you reckon? A 29 possible? A 29 is possible. Lots of hard front tyres. It's hard or soft, as we saw a lot. You know the last, last post to a 29 lap round here. Me yesterday, two minutes 29. <laughs> there you go. Running between two different commentary boxes, absolute nightmare. <laughs> Let me tell you something as well, to try and get all this sorted. So, qualifying two is underway here for this weekend's French Grand Prix. Bagnaia, Vignales, Quadraro, Morbidelli, Bastianini, Acosta, Alessio Spargo, Miller, Digintonio, Bezzecchi, Oliveira and Martin. That's your running order here. Let's see who's hot and who's not in this first part of the session. They're going to have to be super quick about this, not having to make any mistakes, keeping it hard together. And Alexis Parker has already, already abandoned his lap time. He's shortcutted at one of the chicanes, so he's not going to do any more delta time. Vinales continuing to push hard out of the last corner. Boots it up towards the line. And Vinales is a 130.685. Morbidelli, 131.490. Acosta, 130.784. Miller, 131.007 for Jack Attack. Martins, four and a half tenths up. Bagnaia is up two, but only by 88,000 of a second. Martin across the line, his delta goes top, 131.41. Behind was one of the VR46s, Oliveira goes fifth. Bezecchi on that VR46 goes seventh as Bastianini goes fourth. That drops Oliveira to P6. Here comes Peko Bagnaia though. One, two in the championship, are they one, two on the grid? They are. 134.71, three tenths down on the overall best time. Quattararo, 10th on home soil, 131.396. Maverick Vinales proving he's top gun still. He is 70,000 faster, but he's dropped down two tenths. 
Batman for having some issues as it comes to S Blues. More Bedelli, estimated to go P6. Vinales, however, still estimated to go middle of the front row. He's already fastest. Look at that, Martin, fast sector one. Bagnaia, fastest sectors one and two, the same as Martin. They're trading blows out there. Vinales goes second fastest, 134.39. Puts him second on the grid. Martin's pushing hard. More Bedelli goes fourth. Acosta goes fourth. Alasia Spargo goes fourth. Four, five, six. Row two changes to Alasia Spargo. Acosta and Morbidelli. Martin pushing like crazy now as he comes into the last two corners at Rakudamon. Brutes it hard, keeps it going, front buckling away, gets it out of the last corner. Martin goes to a 129.919. The fastest ever lap around Le Mans ever on a MotoGP bike. A new all time lap record and isn't about to be smashed already by Peko Bagnaia. Hard front, soft rear, up to the line. It's a 130.111. Digitonio goes six, 136.89. Fabulous opening gambit in qualifying. Quartararo across the line now. P12 stays 12. It proves time, not position. 131.363. But Jorge Martin has top dog here. 129.919 as the time to beat. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Quattararo on home soil here. The Frenchman desperately trying to see what he can do next. It's all changing. It's all happening here at Le Mans. So much happening. Hello, Quattararo is only 91,000 down at the moment. He is finding pace. So there's still a few things going on. Maverick goes third and enters the pit lane. Well, they're all now entering the pit lane actually as well. In they come, the mighty 600. Here, well, the 1,000cc bikes, of course, the regulation is going to change down soon to 850 cc's in 2027 100% renewable fuel compared to the 40% renewable fuel we have now no aero devices no whole shot or active aero as well proper riders machines once more moto gp is going to be but they're already a beast to control quadraro into that last corner of akunamon the crowd cheering him on. He boots it up to the line. He's P12 at the moment. Can he improve on the clear track? He goes six. Halfway improvement there. 136.86 on a Yamaha bike that's woefully down on power. That's a superb time to get up there with the KTM and Prilly and Jacadis. Superb time there from Fabio Cordova. Lynn Jarvis watching on, happy with that on the pit wall at Yamaha. Bagnaya will be wanting to find some reasons why. Let's cross over back to the world feed. However much might not stand out as headline, that is a seriously impressive lap time. Well, that's the fastest the Yamaha has ever gone around this track. Can he go quicker now? Jorge Martin has nearly two tenths over Bagnaia. He's got half a second over Maverick Vinales. And Eo Bastianini has gone half a second slower on that first lap there. You wonder if he also, having come through Q1, might have just gone out on a, a used tyre or yeah. something like that. Yeah, because he's 0.6 slower than he was in that, uh, that first Q1. Right, Peko, how much do you want this World Championship? Because this is when the mind games start. Mm. So Jorge Martin with a new record. I mean, that compares it to an Aya Bastianini, which was just moments ago. Let's compare it to pole here from 2022, Peko Banyaya, a 130.450, over half a second quicker. Perfect conditions, I have to say, though. Track temperature, just right, not too hot. Yeah, 25 degrees. Yeah, absolutely perfect. In the air, 18, 19, you know, it's not scorching at this moment. It will be ideal for the sprint. So, Jack Miller has latched onto the back. He's currently in 11th. He's latched onto the back of Banyaya. And Bez is also in there. They all want a piece of the rear wheel of Peko Banyaya. Yeah, this is uh, the, the train. 
he's going to lead everyone round. And I tell you what, Jorge Martin might be just in the right spot, maybe a second off the back of it. The only a worry bit more then is if anyone drops backs it, out yeah. of it, yeah, um, or crashes, or crashes. Yeah, Marco Bezzecchi, I think, is trying to find a way through on Jack Miller, but Jack Miller is trying to make his KTM as wide as a bus. <laughs> Miller Caps will be able to find a way. So they're all out there, pretty much in the same sector. So it's a similar situation to what we saw at the end of qualifying one. That's what we've got coming over here. A very bizarre end is approaching us. Fingers crossed it's actually going to be a good session. So, fingers crossed. Keep everything crossed as well. And hope that everything will play nice. Here we go. At least a push lap, a cool down lap, and another push lap is what these riders have to look forward to. With five minutes to go of qualifying for the French Grand Prix here at Le Mans, Bagnaia leads them into the first corner. Used hard front and soft rear, the same for both. Actually, Martin and Bagnaia gone for used hard fronts, but brand new soft rears. Hard front and soft rear brand new for both of the Aprilias of Vignales and Asia Spargo. Old hard soft, uh, old soft front for Costa, brand new rear. Uh, old hard fronts and brand new soft rears for Cordova and Di Antonio. Uh, and as well for Morbidelli. Brand new hard front soft rear for Bastianini. Old hard new soft for Bezzecchi. Old soft, new uh, front, new soft rear for Miller and Oliveira. Martins run wide. Both, both, that's planned. Both Martin and Morbidelli run wide down at Garage Vier. And the gas gas guys know exactly why, because now they're in a position. Acosta is going to get the toe off of Bagnaia, and the two guys at the Prima Pramax are going to tow each other. And Acosta's cancelled his lap time, Bagnaia's cancelled his lap time. So they're going to have two push laps back to back. Very interesting techniques between them now. They were not holding back in the slightest. They knew what they were getting themselves in for as we go again then with three minutes to go. Bagnaia in towards the first corner, a sweeping right-hander uphill into the left-right chicane, the forward chicane. Hard on the brakes at the front. You're braking and turning from two opposite directions as well. It's a very tricky part of the track to get right. Bagnaia's done it. Oh, someone's down in the first sector. And is it Martin? I think it is. It is. It is. Jorge Martin has crashed out of qualifying. The man who crashed out of the Spanish Grand Prix from the lead has crashed out from the pole here at Le Mans. Huge drama. Major drama. He just dropped the front mid-corner. I was saying about how hard it is trail breaking in and swapping over while on the brakes. And Martin goes to prove me exactly right about how tricky it is. Unbelievable. And he won't get back to the pit lane and out in time. No, he will not. Ah, oh, Bagnaia's crashed! Bagnaia's gone down! The two championship protagonists have crashed out of qualifying in major fashion! Down in sector three at the S Blues corner! He turns the front in at turn nine! He tries to get back on the power and the front dips away from him! Both Martin and Bagnaia, one, two in this pole position shootout, are on the deck! The one, two in the championship are out! And now the door swings open for Pietro Acosta but the yellow flags are still out not in sector one can they get them clear in sectors three and four they've got time to get round and do another lap after this but can the tyres manage major drama someone else is down at turn nine no that's still the marshals Bastianini's going to lose it as well I'm surprised they haven't red flagged this one to be fair Bike's quite close to the exit. There's no way they're going to get there. Fire extinguishes the bike. I get very surprised now they haven't red flagged this. If that bike's on fire, and uh, well, that's that's uh, yeah, Ben Eisner put a fire extinguisher to the bike to put it out. One minute to go on the clock. That yellow flag's not going to be returned soon. Uh, I think we might have it here. Unless this is a ploy by Bagnaia to not, because uh, that bike does not look like it's on fire. So unless it's a ploy to not to keep that yellow flag out. Oh, and that's El Captain down. Ale 
Ignatius Barber has gone down. And to the Ford chicane as well. On the apron. Wow, we've got crashing everywhere. He turns in. The front drops away from him. And he's dropped the deck too. Well, that's it then. With 20 seconds to go, there's yellow eye in every sector of the track. That's it. Martin has pole position for the French Grand Prix despite crashing. Oh, and Miller's down. Miller's down. He was P11. And that's it, sector three. That's a turn eight. That's a gauge vieux. What is happening? Everyone's going down. Four crashes in two minutes here on Le Mans. And the checker flag comes out. Bastien doesn't know what to make of it. We don't know what to make of it. And all of a sudden, in the craziest end of qualifying I can remember, Martin and Bagnaia are 1-2 despite crashing. What? Vinales goes third. Digi goes fourth. Alej is fifth. Acosta sixth. But Acosta, hello. We've got, we've, the track's gone green. And Acosta wasn't in any of the yellow flag zones. And he's only 55,000 down. Bezeki's only 8,000 down here. These two have a lap to run. And they are inside this. Ah, oh, no, never mind. Acosta's four tenths down. Bezeki might go up to sixth from tenth. So he might just get ahead of Acosta here. Gravel across the track as well. Oh, what a messy end to qualifying that was. Oh, and Acosta nearly threw it down as well at the Esplu chicane. That's a messy end to qualifying. Four crashes. Martin, Bagnaia, Espargro, Miller all heading down in each sector of the track, bringing yellows out everywhere. I mean, what are you supposed to do in that situation? It's a, it's a really strange one. Still got time to find. Acosta crosses the line. Won't improve. Bezeki's P10 might improve. Does improve. Uh, so Bezeki goes fifth. Two VR46s on the second row. Digi ahead of Bezeki. They're happy with that. Mighty job, boys. Well done. Well done. So, end of qualifying. Jorge Martin on pole with a new all time lap record of 129. 919 here at Le Mans, despite crashing. Bagnaia second, Vinales third, Digitonio fourth, Pazeki fifth, Alessio Spargo sixth, Acosta seventh, Cordero eighth, Mormonelli ninth, Bashini tenth, Miller eleventh, Oliveira down in twelfth place. This is how Martin crashed. So he's braking and turning at the same time. So the bike is unstable. And just as he turned around, he's lost it mid corner. So easy to do. That's a, and here's Bagnaia. He went down, same similar situation. Lost the front end, dropped it in, and what's he supposed to do there? We're going to see his accident now as well. Super strange session here. It's ended with the top two crashing out and still getting the pole. There was the brakes in MotoGP. Right, that's it then from qualifying. Following is here on Twitch will be the Moto E Race 1 live. And that will be on YouTube delayed. And yeah, our bike, uh, there's a bit of smoke there. The engine kept running on Bagnaia's bike, that's why it was smoking. So we'll be back then for the sprint race later on today. Megan Burge taking you through the lead commentary on that one for the sprint. We'll see you later when Martina Bagnaia won two despite crashing. Bye bye.